Hello there, I'm Tammy back with another YouTube tutorial. This time we're going to be covering a topic that, uh, again, is very hard to find on the internet. Now, I mean, uh, I have not seen many videos for this topic, and everything, all I could find were a few articles saying Stack Overflow questions, which, to be honest, uh, don't really help you if you really want to create uh, an actual app. So, let's get started. Uh, as you can see, I'm going to open up Xcode and I'm going to open up my Touch ID uh, app. So, um, basically what the concept here is, is it's an app that allows you to enter in your fingerprint and you can put in any text or information uh, and lock it up with your fingerprint. So, for example, let me just connect it and you will be able to see... Second, connect my iPhone. So basically, uh, I call it TID Vault uh, since uh, I keep the T and then Touch ID Vault. Um, so yeah, this is the icon here. Uh, I'm going to be submitting this to the App Store soon. So um, as you can see, this is the um, main screen. Uh, we have a picture of the um, vault. Um, we have the title on about page since this is going to be submitted soon. Uh, you could pause the video right now to see it or you could just download the app. Uh, I can click back to the vault and I can also finally click the unlock button and it shows this on our screen. So now let's say I wanted to I click enter password. It's not going to let me since your passcode uh, it can eventually be hacked uh, much more easier than Touch ID could be hacked uh, because of uh, brute force attacks and stuff like that. So I only allow you to use Touch ID on this and that's why it's only compatible with, I with the iPhone 5S, 6 and 6 Plus running on iOS 8 or greater. Because iOS 8 gives developers access to the local uh, to the local authentication framework, which allows them to actually create apps for Touch ID. So if I enter in my wrong finger here, it's gonna ask me to try again. And now, if I enter in my correct finger, uh, just a second. There. Now if I should now if I enter my correct finger in it should uh, bring me to the vault page. Now here I can enter in whatever info I like. I can load some old info. I can uh, save this info. I can even lock the vault again. So basically what we do is let's say we wanted to store uh, my other device's passcode in this. What I do is I go here and I type in the passcode. So let's say randomly this is the passcode of my other device. What I do is I do I enter it in and click save. Uh, now this window is saying that uh, I've saved the info in the vault and I can exit. So if I click OK and lock, it brings me back to the main screen. Now, however, if I unlock it again, as you can see, it immediately loads up, right? As the uh, other screen loads up. Now, if I click load, there's nothing to load since the old save uh, and the new save actually still match. So what I can do is I can click OK, and I can also click save, but that doesn't work because there is nothing to be saved since I didn't change anything. But let's say I change something, and I label this passcode. And let's say I want to lock it. It realizes that, okay, uh, you've changed something in this vault, and um, basically you haven't saved it. So it asks you, would you like to discard or save the current changes? If you click discard and I, and I go back in, then as you can see, just a second, sometime, I, it says on the Apple site that the Touch ID sensor needs to be dry, so it's really not my fault here. Sweaty hands. As you can see, I click discard, and the changes are st are not here anymore. However, if I type in uh, a change, and then I click lock, and I save, uh, and then I unlock again, then it will show exactly what I asked it to save. And if I make another change, for example, then what it's going to do... Oh, sorry. 
I hate autocorrect sometimes. Then if I click save, and it's gonna ask me if you if I want to overwrite the last saved info. And if I click yes, and I lock, unlock, go in, as you can see it has been saved. Now let's say I want to I change something. Okay, now I don't like the new version of this, uh, so I want to load my old save back. I just click load, and it asks me that the over uh, that the text in the vault will be overwritten with the last save info. So if I click yes, it'll show the old save. Now again, if I just erase everything and I click save, then it asks me if I would like to clear the vault. Uh, and if I click yes, and then I lock, unlock, and finally go in. Again, it's not the uh, program's fault. It's not working. Touch ID sensor to be dropped. Unlock it. As you can see, it's completely cleared. So I'm going to be teaching you to create this app and see how it works. I won't really be teaching you how to create the app. I'm going to be walking you through the code of this. And uh, you might want to look at the description from time to time because I won't be uploading the full code for this app. I'm just going to be putting up the bare bones so no one finds any glitches. Now, um, if I, I'm 100% sure that this is um, bug free, I might just post all, all the code in. So just keep an eye on the description if you're really interested in the full code for this app. As you can see, this is the um, storyboard for the app. Uh, first, we have the main screen um, with a label here and an image, an unlock button, and an about button. Uh, the about button just seeds you to this view, and then the back of the vault just seeds back here. Next, the unlock button perform, uh, doesn't really perform a seed here. What it does is it actually runs an IV action called um, test uh, touch ID test touch ID yeah, that, that's it. Uh, so if I go to the test touch ID um, IB action what we're basically doing here is we're creating a new touch context uh, new NS user defaults uh, with the standard user defaults and then what we're doing is we're checking if they actually can evaluate the policy uh, which is the device owner authentication with biometrics basically if they have touch ID and then I'm just uh, not taking there, uh, which could actually be uh, dangerous if you don't have Touch ID. And then what we're doing is we're actually, if they do have a Touch ID, then we're evaluating the policy for Touch ID. And so basically, what we're doing is we're asking them for their fingerprint. And the reason is to unlock the vault, tap the Touch ID home button. And then we're executing all of this code. So what this code is doing is it's checking if it was a success, uh, as you can see, then we are unlocking ourselves. Else, it's checking for the error code. If it's user cancel, then uh, just say that the user is canceled. If they fall back to the passcode option, then uh, just print out and the user would like to enter a custom passcode, uh, but then show them a message that uh, we, that doesn't is not supported. And then default, just print nothing. And uh, else, if they cannot, then just do nothing. And I'm thinking about putting in a uh, basically message that shows them you don't have Touch ID on your phone. And then, as I was saying, we have the unlock function here, uh, right there. And so what this does is it sets, sets the um, locked value to um, false. And then what it's doing is it's changing... Uh, it's making from it's making my timer from validated to invalidated and what my timer is doing is um, I can show you a demo of the app uh, again what it does is it second okay so basically what it's doing is it's flashing this locked label uh, red and black and red and black over and over again. So what we're doing is in the viewed load function we are saying if the vault is locked only if it's in the main screen then uh, set the my timer uh, to a new NS timer with a time interval of 4 and uh, target itself 
and the selector, which is a function that runs every time it's uh, called, is the make red function. Uh, no user info, and it repeats. And then we're adding it to the ns run loop, the ns run loop common modes. And then else, we're just invalidating that timer. So really, we didn't even need that to invalidate statement. But yeah. And so here we're declaring all the IB outlets and the my timer function. I mean variable. Yeah, so that's basically what we're doing there, and then we are performing the SIG uh, to Vault, uh, which is where you enter in all your confidential info. So that's basically what the unlock and test touch ID uh, functions are about. And so next, I'm going to be discussing the lock function. So basically what the lock function does is it's setting a locked variable to true, it's creating new defaults, and then we're checking if the current info is not equal to the old saved info, then show them a message and ask them if they would like to save or discard the current changes and then go back to the old view. If they would, then save, then go back to the other view. If they don't, then just go back. And else, if they're the exact same, then what you then just go back. And the view did appear function that I'm overriding from UI view controller. All it's doing is it's checking if the text is if the vault is not locked, then we create new defaults um, and then we set the vault uh, text text to um, the old saved info. So that's so that uh, when you actually go into the vault, um, let me just show you if I unlock. Yeah, see that's a little problem here. Yeah, so if I was to unlock this, and it should read my fingerprint any second now, then it, uh, just because I had uh, put in that command, it will automatically load the info, or else before you would have to click load, and then that isn't uh, very convenient. So then that's just an extra feature, I guess, that uh, automatically loads it every time. And then what we're do uh, we, I'll discuss the... Um, load function and so what we're doing here is we are creating new defaults again and then we're checking if the current info is not is something basically not equal to nothing if it is something and the old save is not equal to what you already have then what we're saying is the info will be overwritten the current info in the vault will be overwritten the last saved info and then it asks if you want to continue if yes, then it'll overwrite, or else no. And then we're also checking here, it, it basically does the exact same thing here, it's just a different condition. So the condition here is if, if you have something in the current info, um, um, wait, uh, sorry, if uh, the current info is not equal to the old save, and the current info is something, and the old save is not equal to the the uh, text inside the info, uh, the um, whatever you typed it, typed in, which actually we didn't we won't need because we already have this. Uh, then it's just going to say again info will be overwritten da da da, and then what we're doing is we're checking. Um, if the old save um, is equal to what's uh, what is already uh, in in the uh, vault, then we're saying there's nothing to load since the old save and the new save are the exact same thing. And then we're saying else if all conditions fail, then just uh, just load the old save. And so basically, then what we're doing is we're checking. Uh, if the old save is nothing, which I guess we could have put as an else if, uh, then just say that there's no saved info yet, and um, I guess uh, I can't load anything. And so finally, after so long, the save function, but just before that, I'm overriding the touches began function so that we can hide the keyboard. As you can see, I'm going to click uh, right here in the text view, and then I can click anywhere else on screen and the keyboard will be hidden. 
since I'm telling it that if it's not locked, then the vault text dot end editing false. So we're not forcing it to be uh, to end the alt editing, but we're telling it to. And then finally, the save function. So we're creating defaults. Then we're saying if the old save is not, is something, and the current text is something, and the old save is not equal to the current info. Then uh, what we're doing is we're saying that the last save info will be overwritten. And if they say yes, it'll overwrite the last save. If they say no, uh, then I guess uh, um, it will not overwrite the old save. And so next what we're doing is we are checking the con con a condition for if the old save is not equal to nothing, so basically it has something in it, and the current um, information in the vault is uh, nothing, then the, the last save info the last saved info will be clear, meaning that there's going to be nothing inside of the save. If yes, then it's going to clear all the um, all the text in the last save. Uh, and no, then it's just going to do nothing. And then uh, there's three more conditions. And so the first one out of those is um, if the old save is equal to something, it is equal to nothing. So basically, there's nothing in the old save, and there's nothing in the uh, new, um, basically, uh, vault then what you want to do is say that there's nothing to be saved so I can't save anything and then we're just checking if the old save and the new save are the exact same thing then there's nothing to be saved since you didn't change anything and then we're doing the last uh, condition which is an else which will execute it if all of these fail uh, so we're just saving it and telling them that it's been saved so that's basically how this app works um, if I haven't said this already, just keep an eye out in the description. I may or may not put the entire code of the SAP in the description since I don't want anyone uh, finding glitches in the code and stuff like that. Um, just uh, keep your eye on the description if you really are interested in the um, actual uh, full code of the SAP. And maybe if I reach a certain num number of likes, uh, I might just uh, upload the full code. Yeah, so. Goodbye. Just keep an eye on the description. Yep. Goodbye.